Haptic Feedback Award for Best Gameplay. Doom Eternal. Let's not mince words here. We all know why this game is here. There isn't anything majorly complex about Doom's combat. Everybody knows it. Rip and tear. But at the same time, that's the beauty of it. It's simplicity. There's been a strange trend in recent years where developers seem keen on shoving a million pointless mechanics into a game just to try and give you the illusion of having stylish combat. But really, why would you ever use those stealth options when running in guns blazing is faster and even more efficient? Doom doesn't dress it up. You go in, you kill, you move on, repeat. That's it. Fast-paced shooting, ripping demons in half with your bare hands. And this time, you can fly around the map with a sword while doing it. I must kill the demons, you tell yourself. But no, you are the demon. Hate Machine Award for Crimes Against Gaming China China's motto is serve the people, yet they only serve themselves to their growing power on the world stage. And it shows how Western game developers are forced to decide between bending the knee or depriving themselves of their largest market share. Financial bankruptcy at worst, moral bankruptcy at best. At least three other nominees from this category were either influenced or caused by China, from increasingly predatory gotcha mechanics to having major Western companies bend the knee to Tencent because of their user majority consisting of Chinese players, to being ground zero for COVID-19 itself. The unfortunate fact of the matter is, China's large market share of people is just too appealing for big companies who want all that you on. And so, their political shenanigans seep into the gaming world, including their shameless censorship and predatory gotcha mechanics among other violations of consumer rights. China's here to stay. There's no changing that, sadly. All we can hope is that some kind of miracle happens that suddenly makes it unprofitable to focus on them as a market above your Western fans. But, considering how high their tolerance for shitty practices are, I think that's a long, long ways away. Kamige Award for Best Eroge Rants 1 and 2 In a world where every other porn game is made via RPG Maker, Unity, or Honey Select assets, props to Alice Soft for shooting straight and delivering proper games for 30 plus years. While Rants 2 suffers from being a bit too faithful, 1, on the other hand, removes most of the tedium from the first title and adds some of the extra features from later titles to spice itself up even more. Furthermore, swapping out the boring exploration of the original for an actually pretty nifty little card game keeps the experience fresh, with the bountiful encounters and hilarious misfortunes that get thrown at you constantly. Some would say the art lacks the dithered charm of the originals, but it's a faithful enough adaptation for a younger generation, so I can't really complain. It could have been so much worse, after all. Either way, it's nice for us non-Nihon-speaking Westerners to finally have a way to experience the origins of this series without having to spelunk through the wiki. The series may have finished in Japan, but with the translation for Rance Quest Magnum and Rance X in the distance, I'm sure it'll be popping up here for a good few years to come. Most Hated Award for Most Hated Game of the Year The Last of Us Part 2 Oh, how the mighty have fallen. For three console generations, Naughty Dog established themselves as frontrunners of both groundbreaking technical achievements and cinematic mastery. However, while The Last of Us made quite the splash when it dropped towards the end of the PS3's life, the praise it received was largely directed towards its story and graphics, not gameplay. Riding the tail end of the zombie survival trend, The Last of Us earned a slew of praise and a mountain of awards, in large part due to Naughty Dog's attention to detail. Through subtle world-building and visual storytelling, 
They delivered an affecting character drama set against the backdrop of a gritty, depressing world that made everyone feel like shit. In other words, it was the Vidya equivalent of Oscar bait. Seven years later, however, Neil Druckmann managed to go a step beyond making us feel just how horrible their world was by making us feel just how horrible their world was. Just, you know, in a different, unintended way. In the end of this 25-hour slog of self-induced misery, Druckmann's penchant for torture porn really put the player in quite an uncomfortable position, one that could only have been even more awkward for the developers who had to sit there recreating the company-mandated live leak gore videos he probably emailed around the office. Check out this manga, Neil probably texted the mocap director, who had been awake for 35 hours at that point. At the end, a dude puts her baby in a blender, Lamau. While The Last of Us as a series has never really been defined by its gameplay, at least the sequel has a solid story and well-written characters to fall back on, right? Well, what do you get when you take a game with mediocre gameplay and a great story and strip away the story while simultaneously taking a dump all over the original? You get this. A game that sits you down and shovels an entire day of misery down your throat with no payoff. A game that goes out of its way to destroy the main appeal of its predecessor. A game that sets up the most hateable character imaginable, and then forces you into her shoes for the next ten hours. A game that revels in making you do the horrible things, and then chastises you for doing them. A game that V voted the most hated game of 2020. So, to Neil and his three remaining employees, good job. Add this award to your pile. You didn't even have to pay for this one. Redemption Arc Award for Biggest Redemption in Gaming No Man's Sky Five years ago, No Man's Sky came out on a hype train riding through the stars. Unfortunately, it very quickly crashed face-first into the first celestial body in its path. Lambasted by V and Reddit alike, It was as if the entire collective internet came together to laugh at this game and how horrendously it failed to deliver on its promises. But now? It's honestly not a stretch to say it's become one of the best bang-for-your-buck games on the market. With consistent free content patches bringing new experiences and swaths of bug fixes, the game has managed to gather an extremely dedicated following that can actually play together, finally. It's pretty clear after everything was said and done that Sean Murray wasn't a lord of lies like Todd. He was just a guy who got in a bit over his head when talking to press, and didn't stop to double-check whether his promises were feasible. But, props to Hello Games, they took the criticism like champs, buckled down, and decided to set things right. And honestly, right now that's a very welcome change of pace. Let it live on as a sign to developers that they don't need to just pump and dump games. Spend some time focusing on the wrongs and rights, and reward your community for their dedication. And in the end, it'll come out all right. Now, V. Apologize. Scrappy-Doo Award for Worst Character. Abby. You guys must have really hated this game. I mean, the top three choices were all from The Last of Us. But you picked Abby out amongst the crowd, so perhaps we should sit down and analyze that. What is it about her that stands out? Well, look, I know you guys don't care about e-celebs, so let's just discuss one single quote from Yahtzee. This game is about shitty people taking the most irrational course of action. Now... Abby does a lot of senseless killing and violence, like Ellie. That elevates her to at least a sociopathic state. But Joel killed a lot of people, too. So what's the real problem here? Well, it's two things. First impressions and sympathy. Our first impressions of Joel and Ellie were more about understanding what made them tick and their general reasoning, so we could grow to understand them and why they did what they did, and made a lot of selfish actions. Abby's first impression was taking Joel to the driving range in the sky, which immediately makes her public enemy number one in the player's mind. Getting back to the second issue at hand, Naughty Dog tries, 
and fails to force us to understand Abby's logic and reasoning. Even when throwing us into her shoes, we're still left dumbfounded what on earth would cause her to behave the way she does. She never even stops to reflect upon her actions, or tries to understand the consequences of them, like Joel did in the first game. This isn't irrational hatred, it's common fucking sense to dislike psychopathic maniacs. Look, I've ranted long enough. I could write a college thesis on attempting to decipher what in the hell Neil was trying to make us think when writing her character, but any attempt at a serious analysis is just going to get you labeled a hater or something stupid on his Twitter. So I won't bother. She's a fucking joke of a character. End of discussion.